Scriptures on divine healing. The Bible has much to say about divine healing, and we have a lot of scriptures to go through. Uh, I once took some time to go through the whole Bible and pull out what I thought were pertinent scriptures on divine healing. Healing not only for our physical bodies, but also for our souls and for our spirits, for our finances and for our relationships. God wants to heal us everywhere that we have a need of that healing. In fact, the Bible is very clear about the fact that God is always wanting to heal his children and uh, heal them, as I say, in every area of their lives. And um, we're going to be talking about these scriptures that are going to help to build faith because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, I'd like you not only to listen to the word, but I also want you to participate in it. If you go to our website, reachoutfellowship.org, or reachoutfellowship.com, and you go to teachings and then topical studies, you're going to find the section on divine healing. And there you're going to find this booklet, which I put together. It's called Scriptures for Healing. And it's right there on the internet. It's in PDF form. You can download it. And I would encourage you to do that. And then watch this video and look at the scriptures that I'm reading. And this way you're listening and you're reading and you're also uh, speaking it out if you'll speak with me. Uh, if you prefer not to use this video form, then uh, there is a, an audio form as well. You can download that and take that to work or on your morning walk or run, but get the Word of God in you. Uh, we are not giving medical advice. We are not advising you to get off medication or to leave your doctor. What we're saying is look to the Lord to heal you. He will work through the means that you're on currently right now. But as your faith grows, you're going to find remarkable results from the Lord because that faith is going to bring forth healing. And we're going to see many scriptures, especially involving Jesus, where he says, basically, your faith has made you well. So let's ask the Lord to help us in our study, shall we? Father, we're grateful for this chance to look into your word, open our understanding, and ignite our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's begin in the beginning, right? Genesis chapter 1. Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Well, that's not only a spiritual image with a spiritual nature, but God also made a body for us, and it was in the image of God in the sense that Jesus one day would have a physical body, and our body would be like his. God made everything well and perfect. We see that in Genesis chapters 1 and 2. It was only in chapter 3 when sin came in that Adam and Eve sinned, and then sickness and death came uh, uh, later on. But uh, that was not God's intention. God is not intending for us to be sick. Uh, Genesis chapter 20 in verse 17, we have an evidence of God's healing power involving the great man of faith, Abraham. So Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech, that was the king or the pharaoh, Abimelech's wife and his female servants. Then they bore children. For the Lord had closed up the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. You see, he had taken Abraham's wife, and so God shut the wombs until Abraham prayed, and then they were healed of their infertility. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And that is Yahweh or Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. These are the diseases he put on Egypt when Egypt wouldn't let the Israelites go. And God had to bring forth those ten plagues upon the nation. Exodus chapter 23 Verse 25, so you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. 
I will fulfill the number of your days. Isn't that beautiful? God's going to fulfill the number of our days. May it be in absolute health and healing. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? God has abundant promises about divine healing. He will perform it. Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. Isn't that wonderful? In serving the Lord, he had wonderful divine protection. And that includes 40 years of going through the wilderness with the uh, difficult Israelites with all of their complaining. 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning in verse 32. When Elisha came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in, therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi, that was his servant, and he said, Call this Shunammite woman, that's the mother. So he called her, and when she came in to him, he said, Pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. I like the fact that she bowed down and she honored the Lord and the servant of God. And then she picked up that wonderful only son of hers. Second Kings chapter 5, talking about a healing of leprosy. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And Elisha, that's the prophet of God, sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Second Kings chapter 20, beginning with verse 4. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, that was the king of Israel, Tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father. I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, surely I will heal you. You see, he had just gotten word from God through Isaiah to put his affairs in order. God was going to take him home. But oh, he pleaded with God and asked for more time, and God heard him. So I've seen your tears, I've heard your prayers, I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add to your days fifteen years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. Marvelous healing, and there's the promise of fifteen more years. First Corinthians or First Chronicles chapter twenty nine, verse twenty eight. So David died in a good old age, full of days and riches and honor. And Solomon, his son, reigned in his place. David loved the Lord. He had a heart for God. And God gave him a fullness of years and fullness of days and riches and honor and we presume health as well. Job chapter 2, verse 7, gives us some idea about the origin of sin and sickness. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. 
Interesting that when he prayed for his friends who had really kind of given him a hard time about his condition, saying you've sinned and that's why you're sick, and that wasn't the case. It was put on Job by Satan. But when he prayed for his friends, then he got his healing. As you and I pray for others, healing will come into our lives as well. Job chapter 5, verse 26. You shall come to the grave at a full age as a sheaf of grain ripens in its season. That's a worthy prayer. Lord, I'd like to come to the grave and into your presence in the fullness of age, like a sheaf of grain ripens in its season. Let me have the fullness of my years, and not only that, but health and healing. Psalm 23, verse 1, well known to all of us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want physical healing. I shall not want anything that's going to meet my needs and glorify God that I might serve the Lord. Psalm 30, verses 2 and 3. O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. So thank you, Lord, for healing us. Have you thought today about the fact that you're healthy, that parts of your body are functioning just fine? Thank you, Lord, for my health. We focus in on healing to try to get free from sickness and disease. Let's also concentrate on health. Thank you, Lord, that I am healthy and do not need healing. That's another worthy prayer. Psalm 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. That's a wonderful promise, and that includes sickness as well. Psalm 38, verse 5, verse 3. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor any health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head. Like a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness. That's uh, sometimes a cause for our sickness. Not always, but sometimes because of our foolishness. Psalm 41, verse 3. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sick bed. That's a promise worth claiming. Psalm 42 is a wonderful cure for depression. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. So self, get your eyes off of self and circumstances Get your eyes on God and praise him. Psalm 91. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And when you see the word salvation in the Old Testament or the New, it means deliverance, health, prosperity, everything good that comes from God. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Notice how God treats them the same. He forgives your iniquities or your sins. He heals your diseases, which are consequences of sins. Now, because we're sick does not mean that we sinned and brought that on us, but all disease comes from sin back in the Garden of Eden. We know that. And so God wants to heal not only the sins, but also the diseases. Psalm 105. He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes. He brought the Israelites out of Egypt in the Exodus. They got silver and gold from their neighbors, 
and none of them were feeble as they trekked through the wilderness for those 40 years. Psalm 107, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. You see, it's God's word that's going to heal us and free us. And we're going through that word right now. I'm making a little commentary, but that's about all, because I want you to really get the full force and effect of God's word. Again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Psalm 118, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's a wonderful scripture to use here as we pray for long, healthy life. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. But even as we pass from this earthly scene, if we are in Christ, it's still true because we are then in heaven with the Lord and we are still proclaiming the works of the Lord. Psalm 147. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Proverbs 3. My son, do not forget my law, nor let your heart keep my co- but let your heart keep my commandments, for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. So if you want long life and you want peace in that long life, do not forget God's law, but keep his commandments. And where are they? in the word of God. Proverbs 3, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. So we need to depart from evil. It'll be healthy for us and make us strong. My son, Proverbs 4, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Again, following God's word will promote health in our lives. Proverbs 9. For by me your days will be multiplied and years of life will be added to you. So long life and health come from the Lord. Proverbs 14. A sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. So we need to make sure our hearts are pure and clean. No resentment, no bitterness, no envy. It just rots our bones. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. If you want to be healthy and you want others around you to be healthy, Speak pleasant words, words of godliness, words about the Lord Jesus, words which glorify him. They'll make you healthy. They'll make those around you healthy as well. Proverbs 24. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. We want to have great strength, not small strength. So we need to have great faith in adversity. Isaiah 26, again talking about how to have peace and freedom from anxiety and fear and depression. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Isaiah 40, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Psalm 41. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 53, and this becomes, I think, the central foundational point about the fact that Jesus carried our sicknesses as well as our sins when he went to the cross and when he went to the whipping post. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. And here it is. He was wounded for our transgressions. Those are our sins. He was bruised for our iniquities. Again, our sins. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, or he was chastised that we might have peace. 
and by his stripes we are healed. The stripes would be those wounds in his body, especially from the whipping post. And that word healed is for physical healing. So by his stripes on his back, that's why he went to the whipping post, to be able to purchase for us physical healing. And by extension, emotional healing and spiritual healing as well. That's why when you partake in communion of the bread and the cup, the bread represents the body of the Lord Jesus, broken for us. Lord, thank you for your body. Thank you for the stripes on your body. By those stripes, I am physically healed. Then we take the cup, and that represents the blood of the Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you for shedding your blood on the cross for the forgiveness of sins for my atonement. And that will be a wonderful way to celebrate communion and use the bread and the cup as a point of contact. Verse 11 of Isaiah 55. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The power of God's word to heal us. Isaiah 58. Then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring, spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. So God is going to bring forth righteousness and healing and protection for all of us. Isaiah 59. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. When we are looking for healing, it's good to examine ourselves and see if we've done something that is wrong. And say, Lord, show that to me so I can ask your forgiveness, can repent of it, and then receive my healing. Not all sickness is because we have sinned, but it's a first step to look into certainly to see if that is a factor. Jeremiah 17, verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. We praise God because he is our Savior. He is our healer. Jeremiah 30. For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. Another wonderful promise of his healing power. Malachi, chapter 3. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. God does not change. God has always been a healer from Genesis right through Revelation. Jesus healed in his day. He heals today as well through you and me. Malachi 4. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. So God is the Son of Righteousness, and the word sun is S-U-N. Looking at the sun in the sky, we think of that. But the Son of Righteousness really is speaking of the Son of God, S-O-N, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the one who is righteous. And the healing is in his wings as we look to him. Well, now as we begin the New Testament, we're going to see more directly the healings of God flowing through the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 4. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Teaching, preaching, healing. Matthew 6. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that includes, Lord, touch and heal me, that your name may be glorified. Matthew 7. 
Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and he who knocks, it will be opened. Ask him for healing. Matthew 7. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? He is just waiting for you to ask him to heal you or someone you're praying for. Matthew 8. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, notice that, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed, and Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go your way. Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. If you are willing, I am willing, Jesus said. In fact, he never says to the contrary anywhere in Scripture. He is always willing to heal. Matthew 8. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Just speaking the word. And God gives us that authority as well to speak to disease and sickness and command it to go because Jesus has delegated that power to us. Matthew 9. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened. So the Lord says, Do you believe I'm able to do it? Do you believe that God is able to heal? And if you do, that is faith. And he says, According to your faith, let it be to you. Matthew 9. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He was about the business of healing and delivering, and he sends us out for the same business as well. Now we find in Matthew 10, And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. So now he is not only healing, but Jesus is delegating to the twelve. Matthew 11. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. That may have several meanings, but one of them is, if you want to really get a hold of the healing power of the kingdom, take it by force. Ask, seek, knock, be strong in your calling upon God to heal. Matthew 14. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed they're sick. Why does God heal? Among other reasons, he has great compassion. Those of you who have children and grandchildren know about compassion. If you have dogs and cats, you know about compassion. You care. You want them well. Matthew 14. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all the surrounding region brought to him all who were sick and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. 
And so as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Matthew 15. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Notice how she keeps pressing in. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. The children's bread is healing, and healing is for Israel, and you are not Israel, you are a Gentile. And she said, Yes, Lord, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. So she's willing to put herself in that picture as nothing but a puppy dog underneath the table, getting the scraps of bread that are thrown there by their masters. I'll take whatever you give me. Then Jesus answered and said to her, and notice this, O woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. That's what brings the healing. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Matthew 15. Jesus departed from there, skirted the Sea of Galilee, and went up on the mountain and sat down there. Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others. And they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they glorified the God of Israel. Glory to God for his healing power. You see, there's nothing that God can't heal. Matthew 18. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So when you're praying for healing, get one or two friends to join you or a prayer team. There's power in numbers. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight, the scriptures say. Matthew 24, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. The words of Jesus have not passed away. He talked about healing and and exemplified healing and exhibited it, and it's still going on today. This age is no different from the age in which Jesus ministered healing and spoke healing. These words have not passed away. Mark chapter 1. Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit, in other words, a demonic spirit. He cried out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. And Jesus delegates that power to us in the closing verses of Mark chapter 16. These signs will follow those who believe. They will cast out demons, and that's you and me. We will cast out demons. Mark 1. At evening when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Mark chapter 2. 
And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. And immediately many gathered together, so there was no longer room to receive them. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. And when Jesus saw their faith, there's that word faith again, he saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. So here's a case where the Lord was going to show the people around that he could not only heal physically by causing the man to walk, but also he could heal spiritually by forgiving sins. It's easy to say your sins are forgiven. It's harder to say, get up and walk. And God wants us to know that he wants to not only heal us physically, but obviously heal us spiritually by forgiving us of our sins. Mark 3. And he entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he would heal, all on the, heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored as whole as the other. He gave the command and by faith the man executed it and stretched out his hand. Mark 5. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Imagine bleeding all that time. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, and notice the point of contact, to release her faith. If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith, there it is again, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So her faith was released when she touched the hem of his garment. I will partake of the bread in communion, as I said earlier, and when I put it in my teeth and I crunch it, I am thinking of the body of Jesus broken for my healing. As I eat that bread, I am healed. When I have oil placed on my forehead, by the elders or by others, I shall be healed. Set a point of contact as God directs you to release your faith to believe for the healing. Mark 6. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, 
Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James, Joses, Judas, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty works there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. So the unbelief of those in his own hometown blocked their faith, which blocked the healing. So we're getting to see a pattern here with uh, some who exercise faith. In fact, with all who do, he says, your faith has made you well. But when there's unbelief, there's no healing. Mark 8. Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him, and he begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. He looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. In other words, dimly, not focused. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. That, I think, is the only case I know of where Jesus did not have a complete healing instantaneously. But it was almost instantaneous because when the man was partially healed, the Lord laid his hands on him again and completed the healing. We should do that as well. You pray for somebody and it doesn't come forth or doesn't come forth completely, don't hold back, pray again. Mark 9. When his disciples, when he, I'm sorry, when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. And when they saw him, the people were greatly amazed. And running to him, they greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one in the crowd said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. In other words, a demonic spirit that keeps him from speaking. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. How sad. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. He fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe... All things are possible to him who believes. Notice that all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I like that prayer. I believe, but help my unbelief. Strengthen my faith and help me to get rid of all unbelief, Lord. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, and notice how he speaks to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, His disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? Jesus said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So some problems are more difficult than others and are going to require prayer and fasting. Mark 10. Now they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
Then they warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. See that pattern? Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. You see, he recognized that Jesus was the son of David. God had promised David that from David's line would come the Messiah. This is the Messiah, the Savior, the Deliverer, Jesus Christ. Mark 11. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. That's faith being exercised. Notice it's speaking, and it's also praying. Both are acceptable. You can speak to the mountain and say, be removed. Or you can pray, Lord, touch and heal this mountain. And of course, it has to be in the will of God for God to answer it. Mark 16. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. This is talking about you and me going out and sharing the good news of salvation with others. We're going to cast out demons, speak with new tongues, and this is the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, tongues in a private prayer language, not the gift of tongues with an interpretation for the assembly. They will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. You and I are to go out and lay hands upon the sick to see them recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Luke 4. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book and gave it to the attendant and sat down, and all the eyes were on him. And he began to say, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So that's what Jesus has come to do, to preach the gospel to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, Proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty those who are oppressed, and uh, to proclaim the acceptable year, the year of God's salvation, which is today. So the Lord is not only wanting that, not only did he fulfill that, but that's the commission he gave us, and I just read that commission. As you and I go out, we're going to be seeing the signs following, laying hands on the sick, casting out demons, etc., Luke 4, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Luke 6, and when he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, 
who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases, as well as of those tormented with unclean spirits, they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. All diseases, all people, all the time. Luke 7. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And that very hour he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits. And to many blind he gave sight. And Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. What is the proof that I am the Messiah, he is saying, the promised one? Watch me work. And so his healings are authenticating his ministry. And that's why he gives us that power to cast out demons and to heal in his name, to authenticate the fact that this ministry of the good news of Jesus Christ is the one from God. Luke 9. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons. See, he's delegating it out. And uh, not only power and authority over all demons, but to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. So they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. So the Lord was not only doing, but he was training the next generation, so to speak. And so it has been down through the church ages. Healing, ministering, giving it to the next generation. Luke 10. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also. So not just the original 12, but then the 70. And he sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest and heal the sick there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. So they're to go out and they're to minister healing. And uh, they're to heal the sick and they're to say, this is the evidence that the kingdom of God is here near you and among you. And if you receive Christ, that kingdom will be in you. What happened when they went out? Luke 10. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So they were excited about the fact that they could cast out demons and they had the authority over the devil and those demons in the name of Jesus, and that's good. But what's greater is knowing that you're born again, that you're saved, that your names are written in heaven in the Lamb's book of life. Luke 13. Behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, He called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore come and be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrite! Does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loosed from the bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced. 
for all the glorious things that were done by him. Now, I've got more scriptures coming up, and I think we're going to stop here, and we will continue in part two. And I'd like to close in prayer for you and for your need. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chance to study your word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. May faith arise in our hearts to be healed, delivered, and free. Touch us and heal us, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.